scenario. However, Highlands is a, is a, a computer node have AI ability. It include uh, include the uh, ARM core and the disk and uh, uh, and the memory. It also include this chip. That's the Huawei NPU have powerful have much powerful AI uh, AI ability than CPU. It also have embedded camera can collect video stream. Customer uh, I, so far the Highlands is target for the for the development uh, development uh, developer. Developer can buy one or few. That's uh, highlights running in the lab. And then my then developer do the model training, do the uh, skill management, that's AI algorithm and the model management in the cloud. And then after the AI development is done, it will deploy the uh, deploy the AI algorithm and model to the to the uh, to the highlights. And then the the AI algorithm's output like a picture video stream can upload to the cloud and uh, or even publish to the internet. For these three scenarios, the, there are some common theme. Is that uh, at service actually is extension of cloud service. Uh, if if we have uh, we can think if we have enough bandwidth between the between the edge and the cloud, all the service running the edge can run in the cloud. We don't need edge node. So, but uh, why we need edge node? Because uh, the data is generated in the edge side. And we want to do data affinity schedule at the edge side. This data affinity scheduling actually is 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 old, is a very mature and old uh, mechanism happening in the cloud. For example, for the for the big data, this uh, if if you familiar with Spark or the Hive, this kind of um, platform, the the task scheduling. The one, one, one of the major work of scheduling is uh, data affinity scheduling. That's a strip the computation to the node with data to achieve better performance. It's not new for the edge. It's the same thing that we ship some computation to the edge node, uh, which generate data. Second thing is that uh, the edge service still need to communicate with the other service, for example, in the cloud or in the, cl uh, in the in other edge. Uh, and uh, there's no clear boundary between the uh, between the cloud service and edge service. We we ha we don't uh, we cannot clarify we cannot clear uh, we cannot uh, identify which service must run in the edge. For example, if our edge node is a uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, if we want to it run in the AI uh, the face recognition recognition algorithm, because its uh, its CPU is limited, so we can. Maybe you only put the face detection in the edge side and label the face recognition at the cloud side. But if we have we have highlands as edge node, highlands have a have a D chip, have a NPU, so it can handle larger model. We can put the face recognition in the edge side. So whether whether we need to deploy the service to the edge or to the cloud, it's not only depends on the data size. Uh, data affinity, but also depends on the edge node resource. This is uh, this is common scheduling scheduling uh, issue. So uh, this uh, scheduling issue may happen at the wrong time. The result is that uh, we don't want to have static uh, location of uh, what is running the edge, what is running the cloud. Yeah, this is a typical edge scenario. I think the. Finally, we have a, uh, have a consumption that uh, have some conclusion that Azure service actually is an extension of cloud service. Uh, because uh, uh, Azure service is so uh, so similar as a cloud service, um, and we, we can think uh, our our Azure platform also have a similar uh, similar function as a cloud service for them a cloud platform. For example, they need to support node management, support application deployment and monitor, and we need to provide service uh, virtual network to link the all the service, and uh, we also need to support service registration and discovery. So we have a common question: is whether we can use the existing cloud platform application platform for the edge directly? In the left left side picture, that's a that's a simple. The Kubernetes framework, uh, uh, that's uh, architecture. 
they have a cool master running uh, cool master manager all the Azure, Azure node, uh, uh, cloud node, cloud VM. And in the cloud VM, they have Kubelets. Kubelet connect to the cool master directly. And then it also have a container network link all the service running in each, in each machine, uh, link all the container. And if we go to the edge side, maybe one simple solution is that we let we can let the uh, registered edge node to the Kube master directly, and uh, with that, so that Kube master can deploy the service to the edge and can run that directly. But uh, it may not work. It's, it's because the the Kube master uh, Kubernetes is defined is designed for the cloud. Cloud is uh, defined for the uh, designed for the uh, for the data center environment. In the data center, we have server. Server have fast CPU, have huge memory. Also, its network is high speed, high performance network, reliable. And the each edge node, each VM can connect can talk, can connect to another VM without an issue. But in the edge, we have some challenge. The number one challenge is that edge node is running in the private network. For example, we may have a Raspberry Pi running in my home, and my home it have no public IP address. It in the this, this node needs to connect to the internet through the net. So the service running in the, this, this node cannot be accessed by the service, uh, by the client running the cloud directly. So we need to handle this uh, net issue. This is the first, uh, first issue. The second issue is that uh, edge node connect to the cloud through internet, uh, compared, to the, uh, compared to the data center network, the internet performance is much lower than the than the data center network. Its bandwidth is low, latency is high. And uh, more important that uh, it's unstable. Internet, we know internet may offline, some, uh, may, may broken sometime. And uh, for this situation, the service running at the other side may need, need to handle the offline auto, autonomous. The, the third scenario, the third issue is, uh, is uh, in, in the other side, the hardware there are many, many hardware type. For CPU, could be AMD64. Uh, ARM could be MIPS. And the memory is varied from maybe uh, 64 mem megabyte memory to the 100, to more than 100 GB memory. So to support this uh, resource constraint edge node, we need to have lightweight edge environment. For example, for the Kubelet, if we run Kubelet without, uh, without any workload, it's, uh, it will take uh, more than 300 memory, 300 megabytes memory. But if our edge node have only 64 megabytes memory, we cannot run a Kubelet directly on the edge node. So we need a lightweight edge environment, a light agent. Yeah. These three challenges is, is we build our system majorly based on these three, three challenges. Uh, actually, there's some edge challenges like, uh, like security, like the, there's a, many more nodes in the edge side than in the cloud side, but it's not so important for our architecture. We only build our system major based on these three characters. Next is we talk about the related work in this area. The edge platform for each cloud provider, actually major provider like Amazon and Azure uh, and Alibaba actually, I think it's uh, come from the IoT platform at first. For the IoT platform, IoT device will send the data to the cloud directly. And then, because, uh, because the data is so large, they cannot fit in the internet net bandwidth. So they will have we add edge between the IoT device and the cloud. Then in the edge side, we will do, do some local filter and aggregation. One example is IoT data analytics. We do the uh, local filter aggregation and uh, decrease the data, data volume and upload to the cloud for the global aggregation. When the AI is more popular, we have we have intelligent cloud and intelligent edge, uh, in, uh, intelligent edge. And the typical scenario is that uh, do the, we do the model training at the cloud and do the infer, uh, AI inference at the edge. For the IoT platform, the IoT device data is sent to the cloud uh, directly. May, it may go through the MQTT protocol. Uh, in the cloud, this MQTT broker running the cloud, and the IoT device have MQTT client and send data, uh, send data and communicate with, 
with the cloud, uh, with MQTT protocol. Uh, MQTT is good for this scenario because uh, first it's lightweight. Our device may have 128 KB memory. Uh, the MQTT is a lightweight protocol, so it can fit in the memory in IoT device. Second thing is that IoT device is just like edge device. It's running, may run in behind the night. Uh, this uh, pops up semantic, uh, 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 this um, pops up protocol is easy to handle this kind of uh, send a message from cloud to the edge side, uh, to the IoT device. Just use the pops up, uh, pops up protocol. But, uh, and then when we have edge, we install the MQTT broker at the edge node. And the IoT device just send the data to the edge node through the MQTT protocol. That makes sense. Uh, next is uh, whether we need, uh, but for the protocol between the edge node and the cloud node, uh, is that good to use MQTT protocol is a question, is question mark. It's because, uh, as we, we just talked, that uh, the web service, the, the cloud edge service is, can, is the extension of the cloud service. Edge service need to talk with cloud, cloud service. Uh, as we know that uh, we developed the cloud service based on framework just like a microservice. Two edge services may talk with each other through the HTTP. If we deploy the cloud service to the edge side and the two service and this service need to talk with cloud. If but the, because before they use HTTP, now the major communication channel changes the protocol to the MQTT, we have to do the code change to set to to, uh, to uh, adopt the new protocol. This first issue. Second issue, issue is that uh, we, when we develop the cloud service, we need, uh, we need a load balance, we need uh, service discovery, we need a service uh, registration. MQTT doesn't support that. Uh, the third one is that uh, uh, cloud service may not, may not only transfer the message, it also transfers the, video, uh, the stream data, for example, video stream. And, MQTT is, is a pop up protocol. It is uh, only transfer the message. So for the video stream, this kind of requirement, it cannot support. So actually, we developed an uh, um, uh, edge platform. In the, uh, we try to provide a similar environment uh, as in the, uh, in the cloud, uh, in the edge side, as in the cloud side. We hope that uh, cloud service can deploy to the edge side without change, or with very little change. This, this, is, uh, uh, our, uh, this is our goal. We hope we can manage the edge node and the cloud node as a single cluster, as, one, as a single hybrid cluster. We address this uh, edge environment's special character with the following method. First, we link the edge node and cloud node in one VPN, so we solve the net issue. And then we provide uh, offline execution uh, autonomously ability, so we handle the offline execution issue. Third one is that we provide a lightweight edge agent, so we, we don't need uh, much memory. Uh, we have three components to do the work. First is, cool, first is cool bus, it, it handles the edge network. Second is edge metadata service, handles the offline, process, offline data processing work. The last is a uh, Kubernetes execution, actually it split, uh, split the Kubernetes uh, to two parts, one is the edge controller, another is the APP engine. Later I will introduce uh, them one by one. Uh, Kubernetes work is to link the edge node and the cloud node in a VPN. Uh, in, this, uh, in this picture, so firstly, uh, we have we have assumption that uh, uh, that each edge node each edge node running in one the, its own the virtual net uh, uh, in its own private network they cannot talk with each other directly they need to talk to the cloud through through net in this uh, for this architecture uh, in the for one VM in the cloud we have at least one VM have have public IP EIP. And the edge node can connect to the, this uh, cloud VM through this EIP. Based on this EIP, we will set up a, a VPN, connect all the, uh, all the edge node and the cloud VM with that EIP. Next is that 
this this VPN set up uh, build the first first subnet, and then uh, we need to link the in the VM in the VMs on the cloud side they also have a VM VPN uh, VM subnet. We need to, we need to uh, configure the routing routing rule to link this uh, this VM this uh, VM subnet and with that edge node subnet. At last uh, is that we need to also link the container network running in the cloud side and the container network running at the edge side. We need to link them as a single VPN. Uh, actually, this cannot work. It's just uh, configure the that root 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 uh, root rule. It, it can do this work. We can build that. Uh, because all the container network is linked as a VPN, we can use the existing that's a microservice framework. For example, the uh, Istio to uh, to do the to do the communication without much core change. We do this work with uh, this architecture. This architecture at the right side. That's in Kubus uh, have a client running in the edge node and have have one have one virtual router running at a cloud VM. The, the cool bus uh, that's agent uh, will have a TCP client socket uh, set, up, set up a long run TCP connection to the server side. To the server side. And it will set one or more TCP connection for the performance, performance issue because uh, one TCP connection have, have limited bandwidth. Uh, then based on this TCP, Long TCP connection, we have L1, L3. That's based on the OSI, OSI network layer. L2 is just a connection between the edge node and cloud node. L3 provides a routing, routing ability. For example, if one edge node needs to send message to send the package to another edge node, it needs to route it by the, by the cloud VM. So L3 provides the routing ability. Then over the L3, we have a tunnel interface. It's, uh, it can get the packet, get IP packet from the OS kernel. If we have, a, if we want the edge service, edge service to all the cloud service, send the send the message to the edge service. It will for, the cloud service will send the packet, the IP packet to the OS kernel. Then OS kernel will forward it to the tunnel interface, go through L3, L2, and TCP connection send to the edge side. Then go through L2, L3. At tunnel and the kernel to the edge service. The, the, the return package is uh, use the same, uh, use different, use uh, another way to return to the cloud service. Based on that, uh, we, we build our VPN and uh, then uh, we can configure our routing rule to, to set up the uh, VPN for different, uh, different subnet. This is a cool bus, uh, cool bus worker that it is, it says, it goes set up VPN for the cloud node and edge node. Next thing is for the uh, to address the second character that's uh, offline scenario. That means uh, the the edge node may run may run independent uh, autonomously when the when it lost the connection to the to the internet. The current Kubernetes doesn't support this because the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes download the power spike uh, and store in the memory. When the network is uh, network is broken and the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes machine got to restart, uh, all the all the data in the memory lost. So we need uh, we need persistent the data in the in the edge node for the configuration. And we did this work based on the etcd. Uh, I think that because we are from the cloud native. Uh, community, we know etcd. etcd is a uh, have good, uh, very good feature is that uh, it support watch. Uh, we use etcd to do the, to implement a kind of database level uh, data replicate or da database data sync. Uh, etcd have, uh, the normal database replication is based on, is a transfer or deliver the the DB transaction log to another node to achieve this uh, data replicate. ETCD is good that uh, we, we know ETCD. ETCD have an API named watch. 
is good. It's actually watch APIs output is transaction log for that node. It's very good. Very good. It's better than MySQL or the SQL Server. Is that ETCD is key is a tree. We organize that tree. The watch can get the transaction log for different tree, different folder, different branch. So we can do this replicate for freely for different branch. It's very useful. For example, when we do a replicate, uh, for example, we we want a cloud want to manage multiple node, edge node. Each edge node only want to get the data for its own data. For edge one, don't want to get data, config data for edge two. Actually, we can have when create a different folder for the edge one folder, edge two folder, and put the data in the put the edge one data to the edge one folder and edge two in the edge two. And then at one only watch the at one folder and get the data for that. Based on that, we can get the database level as replication. Because the watch provides the transaction log, so we don't we don't need to do this um, full snapshot uh, replicate. We just do the incremental replication. It can save the bandwidth. And uh, and ETCD support uh, support transaction, so we can support transaction for this replicate. Actually, the algorithm, if, if you are familiar with the ETCD, ETCD API provides a uh, replication API named Miro. It, it, it replicates data from one ETCD instance's folder to another ETCD instance. We did some change to support this eventually consistent atomic and when, uh, and when the, data, when the service restart, when the, this single service restart, we don't want to uh, to to transfer data, transfer full data again. So we do some core change, do some small change for this mirror. Uh, major thing is that uh, we store for one data transfer, we store the revision, use the transaction to the target, target DB. Based on this uh, automatic service, the configuration could be transferred to the uh, to the edge, and. Uh, and have eventually consistent and atomic. And then any service running the edge side, he just needs to read the data from ETCD. Uh, if if network is broken, because the ETCD is already there, so they, they don't aware whether network is offline or online. When the when when the, when the machine when this edge node restart, because data is persistent, they just read data from ETCD, they don't need to worry about that. Similar, we need to transfer the status back to the to the cloud. It's just like uh, to the cloud. We still use this single service to do the to do the this status transfer uh, transfer back to the cloud. Uh, actually, this can this automated service provides a common that's a data sync facility for the uh, for for the edge environment. We build we build our that's a. Uh, Kubernetes support based on that. As we know, um, for almost for all the power, uh, for the, all the Kubernetes object, they have two sections. One is the spec, another is the status. For example, port spec, port status. Port spec is a configuration of the customer or the controller and for, for the power. And status is the report data get from the Kubernetes. Uh, the left side is the Kubernetes, uh, uh, the current Kubernetes uh, architecture. That's the Kubernetes just uh, just send uh, connect to the Kubernetes directly and get the powers back and and send back the status. And the right side is uh, our that's Kubernetes edge extension. We we split the Kubernetes Kubernetes to two part. One is the API engine and another is the API engine running at the edge side. That's edge controller running at the cloud side. Edge controller's work is uh, present uh, the replica, uh, present the, um, the take the role like the Kubernetes as a node. It will get the data from get the configuration data for uh, for the nodes, and uh, for example the power spec, get the power spec from Kubemaster, then write to the to the metadata service to the edge ECD at cloud, and then the data will be syn uh, will be synced to the ECD at the edge side. Then we, our API engine just uses the data and to, uh, use data to run just like a common kubelet to run the pod. Similar, the the status is uh, is sent back to the cloud side. 
uh, I, this is uh, uh, this is the our uh, that's Kubernetes at uh, extension. Actually, here we give an example for the Kubelet. Actually, for our environment, we also need uh, need to have similar similar thing uh, like the Kube proxy, Kube DNS, and the other services. We also use a similar infrastructure, that's a metadata service, to transfer the, the metadata and the uh, metadata and the status. Yeah. This is a uh, this is our that's a, a controller uh, our Kubernetes architecture. We uh, we use this uh, uh, we use metadata to sync data between the edge and cloud to achieve that uh, offline autonomous requirement. Yeah, this is architecture. We the we have some uh, summary. First, that uh, uh, from our scenario, we know that edge service is tension of cloud service. And the edge service uh, is just cloud service deployed, deployed to the edge side. And edge service need to talk with other edge service and, uh, and cloud service in the cloud. We hope we have similar environment so that uh, when we migrate the, the services from uh, between the cloud and edge, we don't need to change the code. This is, this is our requirement. Another thing is, uh, uh, the current uh, existing cloud application platform cannot be used in the edge directly. It's because edge have a special character other than the and the cloud environment, other than the data center. For example, edge node running in the private network, and edge we cannot uh, we cannot send uh, client in the cloud cannot connect to the service running at edge directly, and the edge node connection uh, connect to the cloud through internet, so its performance is bad and. Uh, uh, it's not stable, so we need we need to support edge side uh, autonomous. So, third one is uh, the, there's too many type of hardware in the edge side, and the uh, there's some hardware have very uh, resource constrained hardware. We need to support this uh, resource constrained hardware. We need to make our agent is small, and uh, we support this. Uh, we have Kube Edge include these three uh, major component. That's Kube Bus provide the VPN, uh, provide VPN support to connect the edge node and cloud node, and have metadata service to handle the uh, async, uh, async, uh, async, async data replication. And uh, we have also a Kubernetes extension built based on the edge metadata service. Yeah, this is, uh, this is our, yeah, any question? Yeah, okay. So, so uh, now I understand that uh, oh, so, edge nodes so, are, are actually. The, um, oh, sorry, I cannot hear. So, is there any previous um, um, tries of edge nodes without using Kubernetes? And uh, what's the comparison of, of how, how things run? Oh, so is there your question that uh, is there some. some some previous, previous, uh, work. Pre previous work. You uh, didn't use this framework? Yes. Have okay. You tried. Yeah, actually, when we do this edge platform, we did try the. Try, try this kind of architecture. Uh, we met this issue. First issue, we met the issue we just mentioned. That's uh, actually for this scenario, the major issue that uh, the the service cannot uh, in, uh, running in the edge cannot access service at running the cloud. You know, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system. Its major goal is uh, not a major goal. Its one goal is to orchestrate the service running at a different node. But with this architecture, um, because network is not. Excuse me. Um, I'm wondering if there's any any. Um, uh, tries uh, not using Kubernetes on the edge nodes and the difference before you have uh, edge nodes with Kubernetes or sim uh, um, yeah, or, or oh, so, the sorry, I cannot hear. Maybe you can use Chinese, uh -huh. I can translate that. Uh, 
Kubernetes 或者 Kubernetes 在 Edge。哦哦哦 ，Yeah, I, I know. 呃、uh, ，Your question is whether we have this Edge platform not based on the Kubernetes. Yes, we have tried that with kind of service at function at at Edge. That's provide function support. 呃、uh, ，the architecture actually is still based on this this two this c o b u s and the And the metadata service the function actually it also have metadata to send from send from cloud to the edge, and have also function status send from cloud edge to the cloud. They based on same architecture. The compare with the function and the Kubernetes major thing is that Kubernetes is orchestration, so uh, orchestration framework that's uh, that's different edge different edge node can can work together with another node, other node, but. Uh, A function is just a start function and queue the function. They they don't need to uh, work together with each other. Thank you very much. Another question: Have you tried to upgrade Kubernetes or Kubernetes in the edge node?、Uh, I'm not sure if that's what, what you what you, you mean Kubernetes. Actually, we didn't use the, use the Kubernetes directly. We、ah. do the code change and get the code we need running in the edge side.、But、we support、uh, this kind of OTA. We have this part OTA to upgrade upgrade our ad engine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh! We we need. Okay, there's some question. Yeah. Oh, me me me. This is Li Dai. Do you manage your OTA through your Kubernetes? No, that's different. That's different、uh, infrastructure because we cannot use Kubernetes upgrade itself. So you do differently through、uh, OT and using the different architecture. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe it's、uh, we are out of time. We can discuss offline. Yeah. Uh. Oh, last question. Okay. Oh. Oh, uh, maybe. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> uh, since the edge node is be able to run offline, uh, how's the how does the uh edge controller uh be able to aware that whether the edge node is temporarily offline or it's just broken? Oh, actually, edge controller's work is uh, just a talk, just a talk with, uh, just a talk with etcd. I don't、yeah. need to understand whether it's offline or online. So, is it able to 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 restart or、um, just to bring edge node up? No,、Because、actually, if... for this we, we we try to extend the Kubernetes to the edge side. We have, but edge side, but Kubernetes may have haven't some semantic for the edge. For example, if edge node is offline, maybe edge node still running, but we have no such state for the Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, uh, is uh, we we define whether it's offline. We we show in the Kubernetes whether this node is、uh, is dead or it's still work. So far, we we take it as still work, but it's just a virtual work. We don't need we don't know whether it's just offline or just it dead. Okay. Okay. Thank、yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Out of time. We can talk offline. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.